guys! So today's video is going to be about how to deal with psych patients in the hospital setting. And I'm going to be 100% upfront and honest with you guys. I am by no means a psych nurse. Psych nursing does not appeal to me. I am so thankful for those who do psych nursing because I believe it takes a very special person to do that. And I'm thankful that you guys do that job so that way I don't have to do it. <laughs> because I am not, and I am just not a psych person at all. So, with that being said, no matter where you are in the hospital, you are going to deal with, interact with psych patients. And so this video is going to be geared more towards um, uh, the psych patients who maybe aren't good at reasoning or who have manipul manipulative traits, gosh I can't speak, or um, those who are maybe inappropriate. You know, there's a lot of psych patients who are just really out there functioning well in this world. But in the hospital, you may be like, for example, I'm in the ICU and, you know, psych patients get sick. And so they are in the ICU and they still have their psych personality traits. So the best, 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 best thing that you can do when interacting with psych patients is one, set your boundaries and be firm. So psych patients a lot of times have, um, I don't want to use the word issues because I'm not trying to offend anyone, but have issues with knowing where that line is set. For example, I had a patient who really, really, really liked pain medicine, if you're getting what I'm saying. And um, this patient also had bipolar, schizophrenia, and borderline personality disorder, and was very manipulative and controlling. And so... From the get-go, I had to set the boundaries and say, no, you cannot have IV pain medicine before you take your oral pen pain medicine. Um, this patient only wanted the IV pain medicine, and I, and I had to set my boundaries and stay firm. And sometimes there is no reasoning. You can try your best to reason and explain things, and sometimes there just is no reasoning. Sometimes you just have to say, this is how it is. I'm sorry that you don't like it, but I'm doing this in your best interest. And sometimes you just have to leave it like that. Another thing is make sure you are safe. I talked about this in my video talking about how to deal with inappropriate, inappropriate patients, but make sure that you are safe. Um, not saying that all psych patients are dangerous, but sometimes things can escalate quickly. They can, their temper can snap. Ooh, I snapped. Isn't she just the cutest little thing laying back here? Just so sweet, cute. But anyways, you have to be careful because things can escalate quickly. You need to have a quick escape. You need to have someone else in the room, a witness, things like that, especially because there's tendencies for things to escalate quickly. I had a situation um, a while back where a patient was in DTs, which is delirium tremors, which is where you're withdrawing from alcohol and things are getting very severe. You know, it, they're restless, anxious, agitated, uh, you name it. And this patient was trying to crawl out of bed, pulling everything, just not able to be oriented. And I kind of put my hand on this patient's shoulder, say, okay, let's let's lay back down. You're in the hospital. And this patient, like, not swung at me, but, like, pulled away and, like, was going to get out of bed. And immediately I called for other people to come in and help because this patient was 250 pounds and 6 feet tall. And there was no way that I was going to be taking them on. So you just have to be careful. Things can escalate quickly. So the best thing is be firm, hold your boundaries, and set those limits earlier on in the shift. And, of course, be safe. So... Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you have any situations where you've interacted with psych patients, leave it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.